All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. The triangle may not be drawn to scale. Suppose that side length A is equal to 8 and side B is equal to 11. Find exact values or estimate the two decimal places. The sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent of A. So first, in the diagram, let's replace our given side lengths. So we have an 8 across from angle A and an 11 adjacent to it. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find C. So 8 squared plus 11 squared equals C squared. C squared is 185, so C is the positive square root of 185. There we have it. All questions ask about angle A. So let's just label what side is opposite adjacent and hypotenuse regarding angle A. So 8 is opposite of A, 11 is adjacent, and the square root of 185 is the hypotenuse. Now the sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, or 8 over root 165. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 11 over root 65. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, or 8 over 11. Now secant, cosecant, and cotangent are merely reciprocals of cosine, sine, and tangent respectively. So hypotenuse over adjacent, hypotenuse over opposite, adjacent over opposite. Now, depending on your particular instructor, they may not want you to leave radicals down in the denominator. I have left them down in the denominator. I typically don't care. But if your instructor does ask you to clear radicals out of the denominator, you would have to do that. In problem two, which of the following trigonometric functions uses the angle and sides marked? Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? So A is the only marked angle. Little a is opposite that angle and C is the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Which of these uses the opposite side and the hypotenuse? It's sine. All right, suppose side A is equal to nine and angle A is equal to 80 degrees, complete the triangle, giving all answers to at least one decimal place and angles in degrees. So the, what we need to do are find two missing sides and one missing angle. Let's just take our diagram and mark off what we know. The angle A was 80 degrees, the side A was 9. Now the easiest thing to find is the missing angle B, because all the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we can quickly solve that B must be 10 degrees. To find side B, let's use a tangent, because that doesn't incorporate the hypotenuse, which we haven't solved for yet. Just be careful, however, whether you use angle A or angle B, the tangent of these angles will reverse what is considered a opposite versus adjacent. So if we use the tangent of angle A, it's opposite over adjacent, and opposite over angle A is side A, and adjacent would be B. So the tangent of 80 degrees is 9 over B. Solving for B and computing, this is approximately 1.6. Similarly, the sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse, which we can place known values in, then solve for the missing hypotenuse length, compute, and it's approximately 9.1. So here are our missing values. Now one thing to be mindful of, in any triangle, longer sides are always across from larger angles and vice versa. So a quick thing you can do in any of these complete the triangle problems is, if I list the angles from smallest to largest, do those correspond to sides listed from smallest to largest? If it does work out like that, it's not a guarantee that you did everything correct. There could have still been a computational error or something like that. But if not, if somehow you have a larger angle corresponding to a smaller side, then it's guaranteed something went wrong. In problem four, suppose the hypotenuse C is six and angle A is 75 degrees. Let's complete the triangle. So we are missing two sides and one angle. Again, let's replace our known values with angle A being 75 degrees and the hypotenuse being length six. Still, the easiest thing to do is find the single missing angle. Because the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we pretty quickly solve that that angle B must be 15 degrees. Then, to find side length B, we can use either the sine of B, opposite over hypotenuse, or the cosine of A, adjacent over hypotenuse. Note that the side that is opposite of B, little b, is the side that is adjacent to capital A. So just be careful of this changing of what's opposite versus adjacent if you change which angle you're looking at. But looking at the sine of angle B, that would be little b over C, 
replacing our known values and solving for the unknown b, we get approximately 1.55. The sine of angle A will now incorporate the other missing side length A, which we can solve for and compute to be about 5.8. So here are our missing values. In problem five, we're asked to find x to two decimal places. The triangle is not drawn to scale. Incidentally, you should never assume that something is drawn to scale unless you are told that. So let's split this into two right triangles with that height of 97 going into both triangles. Let's label the bases of these two triangles x1 and x2 and note that in our original triangle x1 plus x2 is the missing x. Now in the left triangle we have x1 which we're trying to solve for and we have the height 97. The tangent of 43 degrees is therefore 97 over x1 so x1 is 97 divided by the tangent of 43 degrees. Similarly, in the right triangle, the tangent of 29 degrees is 97 over x2, which we can solve for x2 being 97 over the tangent of 29 degrees. Therefore, x, what we are trying to solve for, is x1 plus x2, which is 97 over the tangent of 43 degrees plus 97 over the tangent of 29 degrees, which is approximately 279.01. Very similar to the previous problem, we will find x to two decimal places, and very similar to the previous problem, we will split it up into two right triangles. We will label the bases of these two right triangles, x1 and x2. And slightly different to the previous, observe that the x we are trying to solve for is x2 minus x1. But still, all we have to do is solve for x2 and x1 and now take a difference. Now in the left triangle, the tangent of 59 degrees opposite over adjacent, 89 over x1. Solving for x1, that's 89 over the tangent of 59 degrees. And in the right triangle, the tangent of 20 degrees opposite over adjacent is 89 over x2. So x2 is 89 over the tangent of 20 degrees. Therefore, x2 minus x1, which is the missing side x, is 89 over the tangent of 20 degrees minus 89 over the tangent of 59 degrees, or approximately 191.05.